You're listening to For Better and Worse with Jess and Rage. Laura, welcome to the podcast. Dude, thank you for having me. I fucking love what you've done with the place. <laughs> you love what I, we've done. I've done with our this little corner of the room. This is a very small house. <laughs> I don't think if people can really understand fully the rooms in the house that I've redone for this and how small they are. No, that's wrong. The rooms are not small. You just occupy a small corner of yeah. the room and the rest of the room goes to chaos. Yeah, that's fair. On the where the camera is <laughs> is a big mess and it's really funny because I found out that Jess was a neat freak on this podcast and I only, I part of what's on the other side of this is covered by a sheet, which my therapist gave me permission to do, but I don't know if it's doing the same effect for Jess. Um, She's not said anything, but she did make it very clear that the room that we were in, my childhood bedroom, was too small for her because it was also small, but it was also um, insanely cluttered. Oh, all cluttered. And the black wall, it looked excellent. Yeah. But it, it suffocated yeah it looked good i didn't have the heart uh, or the energy to do it to this wall we just left it and we need no art. absolutely not the Hope. white it looks great thanks you're We're welcome. happy with it i think it looks great we need a lot more art on that side where jess sits but so maybe by the time this airs we'll have added to the collection um marshall's home goods section slaps right now i know but it's all a little bit chugster you know oh don't even do it don't even get me started on that. It is, though. It's like... I am fine with that. Okay. You like what you like. And people will make you feel guilty whether or not it's cool. It says the girl that transitioned to a middle part. I have no shame about that. <laughs> uh, it took me a while, and I had to train my hair. Nobody tells you that. To, like, lay in that one way? Yes. It's... It's... Yeah. It's unbelievably difficult i it was a plight unbelievably difficult laura well i'll tell you i got i got sunburned on my on my scalp Oof. for the first time in my adult life because i've always had a really pretty severe side part that, yeah. that drastic some are saying <laughs> the like sun didn't hit the angle at which yeah. my side part lay and mm. so now my middle scalp is yeah. seeing sun for the first and time midday in, sun at that Oh, for the first time in 30 years. Oof. And it's howling. <laughs> howling? I Yeah, it like, youch. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Laura is um, an English um, master and guru. Is that the official title? So sometimes she uses words that I'm just like, yeah. I don't know that howling was right, but I, uh. you, it's a... <laughs> A lot of being a English, a master and guru of the English language is saying things with confidence. Mm, yeah. And I think you... And do, being a white man. So you've really channeled some, some good energy here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hair flip. Um, I think you do it pretty well. You say a lot of stuff that's absolutely blatantly wrong. I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> See wrong. No, I've, I'm just I've, I've been I've just been saying that. I don't know what it means. No, no idea. But there are enough people that are woke to it that they're like, you're right. Absolutely, you're a Sagittarius. I'm so I know that I am one, and I know well, I mean, that like I, technically, yes, correct. Technically, I am, and also I think physically as well, spiritually, <laughs> personality wise, I'm hitting all of the boxes. Well, I just remember like in high school, I was. I was always just looking for answers. Like you found them in like the church. I found them in pseudoscience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, you know, Myers Briggs tests, mm -hmm. um which laughable now. Oh, now that, <laughs> that I know the, the Enneagram. Enneagram. Ugh. Oof. Please don't even get me started. But like astrology, my senior year, Mrs. Atkins, our art teacher, had this big book of birthdays. Maddie Bensinger is gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Chris We Mullen. still have it. We do. Yeah. Oh my god, we might have to break it out. Okay. But I just remember reading the like compatibility of our birthdays and feeling like, yeah, oh my God, Gemini, Sagittarius, ugh, rule the world. We're mm -hmm. going to rule the world together. 
And we didn't even like each other then, though. No, you were uh, difficult to be around in those days. Um, there have been a lot of seasons of difficulty. Oh, the seasons I could tell you. <laughs> the seasons of change that my narrative weaves. Oh, my God. Also, I hope so far people have been able to tell our voices apart. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. You should, like, introduce me, I guess. Yeah, this is my sister. <laughs> Hopefully they'll read the bio of this episode. Um, this is my sister, Laura. She's my older sister. Um, By how many years? Three and a half. Almost exactly. Yeah. But four years in grade. So. <laughs> in grade. That, that's important because we were never in high school at the same time. Right. And I believe that is important to acknowledge. Right. I w- you would have hated it. I did hate it. I was one, one year behind. So if I ever had... A class in high school. People be like, oh, Laura Rocher's sister? And I remember saying. Are you also type A and I, completely neurotic? My senior year, I think it was. I forget who, what class I was in. Maybe like a Mr. Hibbs situation, <laughs> something like that. And I said, I'm going to need you to go ahead and lower your expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need you to go ahead and calm the fuck down. Right. Because I don't care. And I cared so much so much and in retrospect i realized i didn't really care i just was surrounded by a lot of people who thought we were all supposed to care Mm. so we were just righteous in our were you in the top 10 no okay oh my god i was this is where i think a lot of my insecurities stem from in middle school okay i graduated middle school quote unquote graduated middle school top seven Ooh. how did they pick seven i don't know but i was top of them Oh, my God. I'm about to t- tell you my biggest secret. I Top seven, all A's, okay? I know. I hate to tell you this. Why? And I've never been able to break it to dad because it's it's huge because he, like, still holds on to that. Like, oh, she was so smart in middle school, you know? I got to be in gym class. Whoa. But what did you have to do? I ha- It was gym, dude. Okay. Like, probably run around things. But... I got to be in gym class and they 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 missed it when they were looking at my transcript <gasps> and you you didn't come I didn't come clean and so then I was just chasing that my whole I was like I don't deserve to be here oh, I don't deserve to be in these smart God. classes because I got to be in gym and so, you're a fraud basically right so my whole life up to today and continuing through it probably mm-hmm. I have just been trying to prove that I'm a smart person even though once I got to high school, it was woefully obvious that... Well, Laura, here, here's what I think your mistake is. You just needed to prove that you were going to be good at badminton. Oh, my God. That was your mistake. I have excellent hand-eye coordination. They don't, t- they don't take that seriously enough. No. I... <laughs> your throat just <laughs> made a horrible sound. I have excellent hand-eye co- coordination. My foot-eye coordination could use some mm. work. No, no, no. It's it's just foot-brain coordination. It's yeah, right. They're foot out of brain. control. Oh well, how that people are dominant-footed? Please, Christ. That's a that's a lie. Soccer players are told. Yeah, and then they perpetuate it to the world so that we all feel the shame that they feel for not being able to use their left foot as well. It's I'm always not, about. The I'm not following, foot. but I get it. What we, we hate football star- soccer players. Sips coffee. Sips, sips coffee. We don't actually, but you know. I, my dream legs are soccer girl legs. Mm. Oh my God. The hamstrings. Megan McCool has them. Oh. The hamstrings. They're just gorgeous. One of the nicest things, one of the only nice things my ex mother in law ever said to me. Oh no. We were on a hike. Oh God. And I That's was. That's how you know hiking was, families know. I was wearing like, you know, like mid chin level like leggings or whatever Mm -hmm. so my ankles were in full display and (laughs) my mother-in-law said rachel you have a very nice achilles tendon well she was a pt right (laughs) yes so she and she so that meant a lot probably it meant a lot it meant a lot to me in that moment and now i i just go around knowing that i've got a great tendon back there i'll never forget it (laughs) ex-mother-in-law what you said resonated. 
that was the oh. kindest thing she ever said to you was about your Achilles tendon. And yeah. it, she meant it because you, she absolutely meant it. And she didn't have to say that. No. She could have just kept that, that in her head. That she was, was thinking, <laughs> I've been tearing down Rachel for years now. I should hype her up for one thing. Because she has an amazing Achilles tendon, which honestly, the Achilles heel, there's a whole thing people talk about with it being bad to have. And remember the fear mongering of the Walmart parking lots? Do you remember oh that? Oh my gosh. Yes. The Rachel. fear that was in me. You have I, to explain. Um, I don't know if anyone else followed this, but it's probably just one of those like lies of fear mongering that people tell us so we're afraid to live our lives. As women. As women. But it was like there was somewhere in Florida, it's always somewhere in Florida, there was a deranged man hiding underneath women's cars slicing their achilles tendons <laughs> which is because, so sad because you can't walk you're done you're done when your achilles is down you're down i mean have you ever seen a, a like a basketball player tear <sighs> Ooh, it Disgusting. makes it truly makes me want to like vomit but it would make me not only look under my cars park near a light always but, park. but just for an extra measure make sure you take a big big old <laughs> leap into your car you open the door open the door Put your foot out. Have that pepper spray aiming down. Aiming down. Just for the <laughs> Achilles Wrangler. Uh, <laughs> the Achilles Wrangler. The Achilles Wrangler. Oh, what a name. <laughs> I could write headlines, honestly. Oh, absolutely. The Achilles Wrangler. I, I don't believe that we were able to really capitalize on how creative we were and funny no. as kids no and talent we were honestly talented i know i stand by i could have been a star if somebody just like we're talking musically me. yeah yeah no i was a thespian as well i stole yeah. the show in seventh grade as tilly a waitress i what you was know the how, show what was the show uh ducktales and bobby socks oh if you remember um emmy uh, award winning not Emmy, Gra- Grammy. Grammy, gotcha. <laughs> it was a musical. Oh. I didn't have any singing parts, and I c- forgot all of my lines, so I improved everything. Laura, and what a I've star. And I brought the house down. Brought the house down. I, Duck Chills Bobby Socks. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Nice. I was only good at singing and not good at acting because I couldn't take myself seriously. You know how we got, well, you know how I got good at acting? Was when we would sleep in the bedroom behind this wall as uh-huh. kids my bedroom now <laughs> and my bedroom first <laughs> and that's such a stupid sister competition that i just did i'm sorry um <laughs> we would be watching tv and then we'd hear the cosby show problematic oh, now but back God, then honestly howling of laughter howling oh i can't even get started on that just as a thing but anyway we would be watching tv really low volume but we'd hear mom or dad jump off their bed to come yell at us yeah and so we turn it off real quick and we practice we sleep how do i look you look good yeah that's just about how you slept <laughs> standing up <laughs> sitting up <laughs> this and is how i i am mom and dad <laughs> <laughs> mom and or dad and i just would pretend to be asleep you would pretend to be asleep we'd have to face opposite ways oh yeah yeah because yeah. we could never look at each other we'd giggle we would giggle we would fight all day long. <laughs> and why on earth we wanted to sleep in the same bed? Because we wanted to watch TV. We were deprived. And it, here's the thing. If our parents really didn't want us to watch TV. Why they, they put a TV watch- in the guest bedroom? And let us sleep down there. <laughs> they could have said no. I mean, I am not one to victim blame, but that was their fault. That was their fault. Um, but in the end, we got here. Another terrible thing that my sister used to do to me <gasps> during those nights. <laughs> Okay, there are two things that you could say, <laughs> and I, I'd be okay with either of them coming out. Okay, because they're well. I think one of them is just kind of a slight towards me. It's exposing. Um, I hit puberty really early, mm. as we know, and <laughs> I was a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Um, Laura, will you confirm? Yeah, as someone that was there. Yeah, absolutely. You were crazy about pizza. What? Oh, my God. You don't actually know the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh. I just meant I was just, like, a large I know what you meant. for my age. I had boobs before you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and as, who's got them now? Okay, that's true. But um, Laura would take tweezers 
and tweeze my toe hairs out of my toes. I was I was like, Rachel, you cannot have those. That's disgusting. Oh my god, I was like in sixth grade. Tweezing our toe hairs. Tweezing my toe hairs. Grotesque. You hated me. Like this was how you got off all your aggression for whoever was in your life. Tweezing Bullying my toe you. hairs. You we had a razor. Right? We, we had razors. I actually don't know that we did at that point. Because I was a late bloomer. Not to brag. Not to brag or anything, but I didn't have to shave my armpits. Till college. Till college. Me either. Sidley and Henry would comment on it every volleyball game that we had. Every single one. She'd be like, oh, you're so lucky. Yeah. And then I noticed Peach was coming in senior year. And I was like, please, just let, me, let me make it to college, Lord. Pre- yeah. Please. Lord. Yeah. But no, I remember having to ask for a razor because yeah. Alana got one Mm -hmm. and we dry shaved our legs in her (gasps) in her top bunk of her bunk bed dry shaved our legs and I came back legs were howling (laughs) okay and that was when I had to have a talk with mom about like I can't learn about this stuff from other people I can't any longer. I can't be the last to know, Mom. I can't. I'm learning from idiots. I'm I'm learning how to twerk on bunk bed ladders <laughs> from Alana. I'm learning <laughs> to shave my legs dry in a bed. Alana. With these guinea pigs. She always had fucking guinea pigs. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> all around her room. And we're, we're doing God unspeakable things. It was ridiculous. Unspeakable things. <laughs> Twerking on bunk beds. Twerking on bunk beds. She used to teach me. I'll tell everybody. First of all, we use twerking like as a term way earlier than I than it came into like the zeitgeist. Yeah. You know, and what we think what I think of as twerking is not what twerking is today. No. Twerking. What I'm talking about. Come a long way. Twerking has really evolved to be kind of an art. But what I'm talking about twerking, I'm talking about like grinding, Mm -hmm. like teen night at the bowling alley. Did you ever go to that? No, we were never allowed. (sighs) Honestly, you just called me out. I wanted to sound cool. Okay. Okay. Teen night at the bowling alley or like the harvest festival after school, Mm. you know, um, Alana taught me if anybody's trying to get good at grinding (laughs) in 2021, you just spell your name with your butt. And I have taught so many people that. Oh my God. The world is indebted to me for who did Alana learn these things from? Uh, you know, honestly, her, her private school friends, probably. Oh yeah, these those St. Pat's hoes. No, <laughs> <laughs> shout out St. Pat's hoes. <laughs> shout out St. Pat's hoes. <laughs> oh man, yeah, private school kids will teach you anything you want to know. Okay. What do you have to say? Well, I just realized, like when you were dealing with Herschel, I have no idea what we talked about the last fifteen minutes. No idea. I blacked out. Oh yeah, so, that'll, I was so excited to be here. That'll happen. I, I mean, I mean, I can. I don't remember either. Honestly, it was just exciting. Oh my god, I'm just so happy to be here. Yeah. Well, y- Laura's here today because um, she's in town, <laughs> and um, I slept here. She slept here for a few nights, um, and because of your opening, because of my opening, right. for which was awesome. Gather Workspace and Studios. Shout out. <laughs> Ohio. Um, but this episode's going in our archive. So depending on um, mine and Jess's schedules as we're like ramping up for um, our busy season, we figured it'd be good to have some things in our back pocket. Yeah. So people could listen to this in a couple weeks. They could listen to it in 2022, whatever. Yeah. I think it'll just be a couple weeks, probably oh, a couple cool. weeks or months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, honestly, probably in June sometime. But our honestly, the banter is timeless. The banter is timeless, and you know the content is timeless. I'm always gonna stay divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Can't undo that Can't one. Can't undo that one. No, I won't would, undo that. Won't one. undo that one. Yeah, that's very true. That's an absolute, a hundred percent. Will not, cannot. Yeah. Cannot, will not, do not. It is crazy to think of all the things that could happen between <sighs> now and when this airs. Oh, my God. Just, like, politically, don't even get me started. The CDC. Um, Hello. Hi, CDC. <laughs> CDC, just a couple of days ago, was like, uh, nobody has to wear their masks anymore. If they're vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, don't wear your mask. But I'm sorry. I don't have a tattoo that says I'm vaccinated. There's no way of telling that I'm vaccinated. It's just I'm supposed to trust that all the people who already weren't wearing their masks 
are just all of a sudden going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm not vaccinated. Still not fucking vaccinated. Let me put my mask on. No. No, no. I, it, I saw a TikTok that was hilarious. It was like, hi, Hershey. It was like, um, oh, the CDC last year t- says wear a mask. Okay, oh, yeah. I'm going to wear a mask. I, I trust the CDC. They're the experts. Yeah, the experts. And then, okay, get this vaccine. Uh, the CDC says get the vaccine. Okay, yeah, absolutely. They're the experts. The CDC says nobody has to wear a mask anymore except if if they're vaccinated. Absolutely not. Yeah, that's the suspicious. CDC. Who are they? What does that even stand for? Center for disease. More like center for dumb control. Oh, shots fired. Wow, don't come for me. I um, respect the CDC. But I guess the thing is, like, the vaccine keeps you... Like, this is the, the difference when I was shooting weddings wearing masks when no one else was wearing masks. I was like, this is fucking stupid because I... It's not protecting me. Right. I'm protecting them from me. Right. But I'm not being protected. And the vaccine is, like, kind of opposite where, like, you are protected from hopefully dying of covid yeah as but two covid survivors laura just survived it she got her first shot and then a few days later tested positive <laughs> it you were right at the end it was so disappointing because i've worked from home um you like were everyone so else i was so cautious like like so cautious and i have no regrets about how i spent my time um but my boyfriend who i live with her live-in boyfriend my live-in boyfriend <laughs> uh daddy he <laughs> he had to go to work every day because he's a const- he's in construction project management and the people there were just cavalier just absolutely cavalier. cavalier but we made it through we made it through so long and then to get it the week we get the first dose of the vaccine it was yeah. a humbling experience to say the least and it was horrible the, the nausea but people you don't talk yeah. enough about the nausea people don't we got nausea oh boy did i yeah I, well i was sick like fully sick like this whole three-day business no i i i was sick for a good eight days yeah probably i had sit. i had three horrible knocked me out days mm-hmm. and then three like wow this is a real bummer days yeah and then two like murmur yeah i got it probably like the day before my birthday but it was i Looking back on it, I was just tired because, like, I work a lot. So being tired is not an abnormal mm-hmm. feeling. And um, my birthday is in December. I'm a Sagittarius, if you recall. And um, <laughs> what if you were like, I was, uh, my on, birthday was in October. I'm a Sagittarius. I was on FaceTime with you Aww. on my birthday, coming from my bathroom up to up to mom's. And I remember getting into mom's bathroom and being like, oh, I'm out of breath. I must have held my breath the entire time up those stairs. Oh, my God. And then the next day I had a cough and I was like, and it's all making sense. Oh. The fact that I cannot breathe right now. And then you call me and you don't cry very often, except on this podcast, apparently. Yeah. Um, oh. And you were like, I have COVID. I, know, I ruined you come. Christmas. I know it meant that you couldn't come and you we hadn't seen you since your birthday which is in June because I'm a Gemini yeah <laughs> oh. but now we're through it yeah we made it we made it and now we're vaxxed and waxed and ready to go it's shot girl summer it's- oh shot shout out shot girl summer shout out shot girl summer but um I guess the point of Laura being here today um other than to have more episodes for you guys so we don't have to take weeks off when we get busy is we thought it would be nice to have a little sister episode um and have a little laura's perspective on my life my journey my marriage my divorce because i've talked a little bit about the stress i put on my family but you know i figured hear it from them horses mouths you know (laughs) Am I them horses? You them. You them horses. <laughs> like them heaters? Them. They're over there. That is a stale bag of them <laughs> heater chips. The trash. trash. In the trash pile um, on the other side of the camera, yes. <laughs> Jess, every time she comes here, I like come downstairs because all the cups and shit that was here from that week are still there. And I'm like, Jess can't know. Jess can't know. <laughs> Jess can't know. I don't clean up every time she leaves. But she knows. It is. It's It's not like... Uh, I'm, gonna reg- I'm not gonna re- i'm not gonna re- i'm probably gonna regret this but it's not like this is a dirty house it's just cluttered yeah there's big- so much shit well i don't know when this house was built maybe the 60s 
apparently people didn't have clothes. Right. The closet space. The closet space is the big problem. We've been complaining about that for years. For years. The biggest closet in our house is right beside you. Yeah. And we've never made good use of it, though. So I honestly. Yeah. It's our own fault. Yeah. It's the craft closet. I got so into the home edit over quarantine Mm. that I was like, Mom, I'll come home. I'll organize everything. And now that I'm home, I'm like. Laura went to the container store and had an orgasm there. (gasps) Rachel. What? Why did you say that? I'm not being serious. Did you bring your vibrator there just for the thrill? I didn't of it? even need it, baby. <laughs> I was so pumped, so pumped. I planned a whole weekend. Did you go there with Megan? Yeah, Megan, who's going to be in our next episode. That's going to be recorded right after this. So prepare yourself. Yeah, I forced her to do it. Mm. Mm, okay. I was just so excited about so many containers. <laughs> oh my god, it's amazing there. I know, Laura. You are an organized bitch. Oh, I have, have to, to be. see it. Okay, should we get into it? Get into it. Get into it. Okay. Um, I've written down approximately two questions, and we're hoping it'll just build, you know, yeah. upon. Should we start with the... Uh... Start with your question for me, and then Okay. I'll... When did you notice that I was changing, um, like, becoming more distant from the family? Um. Okay, so we've talked about this, but I didn't meet Dave. <sighs> Good. Good remembering. I know. For... Until you guys had been together for a whole year. Mm -hmm. Because I was living in Arizona, going to grad school. You met him the summer after your... Or not met him, but got together with him the summer after your freshman year. Yeah. And I didn't come home that summer. Mm -hmm. So I was in Arizona. And when the summer that we drove across the country, which was awesome, and moved me back Mm -hmm. home temporarily, was when I met him. Yeah. And I... He had been like hyped up a little bit like mom and Grammy really he made a really good first impression on them. Yeah. And that first impression carried carried him for a long time for a very long time. But he did not make a good first impression on me. I was like. This man is whack. (laughs) This man is whack. He he's I, I hate to use weird like in a derogatory sense because I think I'm we are weird yeah he was just like bizarre his thought processes are so foreign yeah so foreign literally but also like it it's hard to follow where he's thinking yeah yeah and he he was a very like slow person like just processing yeah or just doing things like he ate so slow (laughs) oh My God. And we're the type of family that doesn't just like get up when we're done. We like sit and wait Uh for everybody to be done. And and he also didn't talk while he ate because he was polite and Mm -hmm. British. And we talk while we eat. That's how we eat so fast. We choking hazards aside, we just (laughs) shove food down our gullets and gab. And it's amazing. He moves so slow. And I was just like, this isn't the right pairing. But that wasn't when I noticed difference necessarily i noticed like i was different around him yeah yeah but you weren't different around me yeah and um that was and when i whenever you see a friend act different around their significant other it's Mm -hmm. really hard to know if it's just like an adjustment period or if it's legit like yeah they're changing for this person Mm -hmm. and so um what would that have been 2014 that I yeah. met him and then slowly but surely I moved to Georgia to teach yeah and you guys at one point came to visit we did and I right at the beginning so that was 2015 yeah I'd been there a year you'd been there and that was the trip where Dave came in like March or April like so it was like my spring break mm-hmm. and that was like he, that's when he overstayed his like visitor visa we got legally married it was right right before mm-hmm. that and i wasn't allowed to like swear and that was the first sign for me that i was like okay i can't be myself yeah around him i went through a period with the with being a part of the church where i was just kind of experimenting with with my conservatism Oof. But I would say I 
there was probably just like one full year of like me not swearing, me not drinking. Oh, wearing these long wearing, ass skirts. Well, long skirts, no cleavage, not cutting my hair, not wearing makeup. Um, but it was just, it was that year because then the next year, as I was like already kind of checking out from like the church, I started swearing again. I dyed my hair, which mm-hmm. was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started wearing makeup again. Um, and that was like right before our like wedding wedding. Mm-hmm. But so it was coming kind of back into myself, but also really isolating myself from you guys. Well, that was when I was talking to Megan about it. Um, Cause there are most of my friends were around, mm-hmm. right? Like you were just such a, we were so close yeah. that most of my friends knew your story. And so my new friends who don't know the story mm-hmm. but are fans of the pod fans of the pod. right <laughs> want the inside scoop and so i was saying to her just yesterday that i knew that it wasn't good and that it shouldn't be happening before the wedding but you were already legally married yeah so it was this like it was just a totally helpless feeling it was obvious to me that you weren't partners in anything no. Um, it no. was obvious to me that you were just making shit work for the sake of making it work. And Rachel, like we've said, you were a child bride. Yeah. <laughs> you were 21. This idea yeah. that you needed to make it work was just. Uh, yeah. It makes sense to a certain degree because we put so much pressure on ourselves to have shit figured out way before we yeah. ever need to have it figured out. But also it was this this pressure that I hadn't seen you put on yourself. Yeah. Cause you've always been so good at just like paving your own way. It's been something I admire about you mm-hmm. because I am, I am not that way. I, I, I work towards yeah. that, but it's a natural setting for you. Yeah. And this was just like, you were so traditional. Yeah. In everything that you were going to do. Um, for well, I think what was difficult in general for me was I didn't have any, examples of what a healthy marriage looked like at the Mm -hmm. time and so I was like deeply embedded in the church and there I'm not going to just like make a sweeping statement that there are no happy marriages in the church that's obviously not true but a lot of people in the church get married for the wrong reasons and they get married really young Mm -hmm. and so the people that I was surrounding with they didn't have happy marriages and so I didn't think that was important right I didn't think and they would have said it's not important right they would have said um that it's not about your happiness it's about your dedication to God and it's fulfilling that promise and that prophecy and being Jesus in the church and all that like I I can still recite the shit Mm -hmm. it's scary Mm -hmm. and um so I literally felt like it was my duty and my calling to serve this person. Right. I also did believe that it was his duty to serve me, mm-hmm. um, which is why like my breakup with our church truly happened at our wedding because Ugh. I had asked, I had asked our pastor not to talk about gender roles because it wasn't something Dave and I even fully believed in. Right. Um, yeah, let's read the room, bud. Yeah, let, I said that. I was like, it's not going to be appropriate and um, for our audience, and I don't want to make them any more uncomfortable than they're already going to be at a religious ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dave is from the UK, and the church in the UK is a lot different. It's a lot less politicized. It's healthier, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm not going to paint Dave as some, like, uh, patriarchal no Chris, like figure because he really wasn't he it but if anything it was like I I was getting a lot of like I didn't know what his expectations for marriage were it was but my life was was dedicated to making his life easier yeah and, it felt like both of you you especially but in in retrospect I think this was true of him as well you both just appreciated the rules yes it was just like there is a right and there is a wrong here. Uh-huh. And it was easy to do the right yeah. thing, even though that was not the right thing for you at all whatsoever. Right. Or for him, probably. No. But that's the toxic thing about getting deep and deep and deeper into um, whatever, you know, 
religion, I guess, Mm -hmm. is if you are told that what you believe is right, then it just everyone else is wrong. And that is really hard. And how awesome is it to feel right? Yes. Like to to be like it makes perfect sense psychologically why that like organized religion in that way is so appealing. Yes. Because to to be able to just say I'm not I don't have to sit in this gray space. Oh, yeah. Is and I don't like gray space. Oh, I, I, I love a gray space, which yeah. is why I, my relationship with the church never mm-hmm. evolved beyond just like singing in the choir. Right. And frankly, I just wanted to be the star. Yeah. And I was. <laughs> Shout out. Classic. But it but it but because I feel so comfortable and at home in the gray space and it it's chaos that be that's beyond what I think you yeah. need because um, you already are a little bit more chaotic than I am. Yeah. Like, it's- well, I, I really clung to the church um, after I had, like, my senior year of high school. My high school sweetheart had just finished, like, cancer treatments. We'd just broken up. Um, I was try- on a new medication that was making me really erratic. The mm-hmm. only time I'd ever really had, like, a manic episode or a, a, se- a manic season. And then I went to college, and I was still kind of, like, spiraling out a little bit. And – um yeah, I just like clung to the rules because I felt like I was hurting people mm-hmm. with how erratic I was being and that wasn't bringing me joy. And but to be to interrupt you entirely. Yeah. Um you weren't hurting people. You hurt one specific person, just like we all hurt. Yeah. people, mm-hmm. you know, and I think it just 18 is hard. Yeah. 18 is so hard. You feel simultaneously like well, for, you're the oldest you've ever been, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you still have such a young heart and mind. Mm. But you're put on. There's so much pressure put on you to figure it out. Go to college. Where are you going to go? What are you going to study? Yeah. What frat are you going to be in or whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it's just a weird time. And I think your situation just was compounding. Yeah. And like I always. Uh, like I loved camp Mm -hmm. like that played a big role that's I mean that's where Dave and I met that's where me and my best friend Meredith met like that's like I loved camp (laughs) Um, but it was really hard because I just like I go full send into like everything I do and um, unfortunately the more full send you can get into the church the more and more toxic and patriarchal and misogynistic it gets it can be yeah yeah it can be but like that's the thing you have to be able to live in the gray space right if you want a healthy relationship with the church or anything or anything yeah and I just um people have asked Jess and I to have conversations about our faith but I think right now it's just um hard Mm -hmm. we're in two very different places and um I just have a lot of like trauma from being a part of the church and I don't identify as a Christian anymore because of it um, because I've seen the darkness, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like the really shitty parts of it. And I have friends like I had a really good conversation with one of my um, friends the other day who's like she's still part of her church, but like is, you know, an advocate for justice and like all all of these things. And I'm just like, I'm really glad that there are people like you that exist. Right. Couldn't be me. Right. Couldn't be me. And. I just had a slow breakup from the church, um, which I think allowed me to come back to myself. Because when we moved to Oregon, I couldn't, I didn't really find a a church family. Um, I like, it it was all trauma looking back on it. Like I remember disassociating during church, um, like completely like blacking out for different conversations with people. Like I just, Mm -hmm. I just couldn't get there. And we tried a couple different churches and, I just remember being like, I just don't think I can do this. And then when we moved back to Ohio, um, tried out other churches, but really got to the point where like Dave was just going to church by himself, Mm -hmm. which was never the point. Like that was never like one of those conversations I would really try to have with him about us was like, this isn't something I'm going to do anymore. Yeah. And that's been something that was important to you was to marry a Christian woman. Yeah. And I'm just... It felt like Oregon was good for you in a lot of ways in that it it reminded you of how important your family was to you Mm -hmm. because you had never – well, you had been far away, but it was short term, right? Yeah. Um, But you had never 
lived in a place where you couldn't get home. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, you didn't come home for Christmas that year. And that was hard for you. Yeah. And it was the first time that I remember feeling like, oh, she's still in there. Well, and lest us not forget that Dave had a job where he was gone for nine days and then home for seven days. Mm -hmm. So I got to be myself Mm -hmm. for for half of the month. Is that when you started getting into photography? I was into photography the year before I left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I started like I was I went full time Mm -hmm. um, out there. Yeah. Um, So, yes. Yeah. Like, that's where I really, like, built my business. Because you came home for Meredith's wedding in mm-hmm. 2017, right? Mm-hmm. And it was the first time I ever enjoyed being around Dave. Yeah. Because he was happy yeah. because of his job. It was really hard and really demanding, but he was fulfilled by it. Yeah. At that time, it didn't, that didn't stay the case. But no. in that moment, he was, he was happy and you were happy. And I thought, okay, okay. Yeah. Um. But it didn't last. And we- no, because him and I just started, decided to go into business together, Ugh. which just, I mean, even if Dave stayed as a, you know, wilderness instructor, or whatever, it, it would have all come crumbling in the end. Yeah. But um, I think just starting the business just like was the accelerant. Right. Because well, it was like we had, our biggest issue was like we thought completely differently. We, we, we approached every problem differently and um it was just like when you own a business there's a hundred problems that come up all the time yeah and it was just horrible yeah 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 i rachel (laughs) has this um tendency to like if you love it don't let it go completely suffocate it (laughs) try everything you can like to get closer rather than like if I love it I'm just going to trust it to be yeah you know like I don't I'm not good at the if you love it let it go thing but Uh you were like we're having trouble let's go into business together yeah let's move into a van let's have a let's live in a van let's like well it's digging the hole deeper so I couldn't get out of it right because once I make a decision, it's the decision. Oh. And I mean. Swan dive, baby. I don't even know if you knew at the time when I. So summer of 2018 when I stayed the night here was like the first. I don't even know if like that we told you that. It was like I, I was like so sick of. Um, it was. <laughs> he sat me down <laughs> and said, Rach. Do you know how many, how much of my day I spend shutting drawers oh. for you? Shutting your drawers. You're not shutting those for me, fucker. I'm like, <laughs> I was just this moment where I just, I it was like a, a pretty close to a psychotic break. I was silent for a good 48 hours. I didn't speak. Oh, yeah. Meredith came over. Well, it's one of those things like, because I get that way too. It's like, if I open my mouth. Oh, yeah. I cannot be trusted with what comes out of yeah. it. So I like. I stayed at mom's for the first time. I remember that. Yeah. And when Meredith came over and told me she was pregnant and I was like, oh my God. We are in different seasons. We are in different seasons. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wild. Wild. Okay. So this kind of segues into the question that I wanted to ask you. Okay. Okay. So we knew, we noticed that you were changing. Mm-hmm. We noticed that you were distancing yourself. Mm-hmm. I noticed that we were not the sister friends that yeah. we had been for the last six years or whatever. Right. Um, Cause it was, it was unusual to say the very least yeah. our, our bond, like you were just a part of it and being four years apart mm-hmm. in age, that was just not what we had done yeah. our entire childhood. So when you were in high school and I was in college and I was back in Kent, it was, we were inseparable, Yeah, you know? And so when I noticed that that was no longer the case, um, I think I, I talked about it a little bit. I, mm-hmm. I it was like sort of like, what's up, Rachel? Mm-hmm. Like, and like, why doesn't Dave like me? Like, what can yeah. I do? Like, I took a lot of responsibility on myself to like fix it. Oh, and I put the responsibility on you as well because I knew there wasn't any fix like changing him. Yeah. Yeah. And um, my question is, and will always be, 
what could I have done? Like, how could I have talked to you in a way that you would have heard as like compassion rather than criticism? Because that's always, I was always so afraid to come to you with concerns. And still to this day, I think it's something that I just struggle with Mm -hmm. to come with concerns because most of them are out of just total compassion for you. Yeah. But they come, they can easily be received as criticism. So I wonder, like, I guarantee there are people listening to this Mm -hmm. that are in this situation who are like, I really do not think that my sister or my best friend is with somebody who's right for them. And I want to have a productive conversation. Is there a way to make that happen? Right. So this is like a hard question because um, there's just, it's not like the answer anyone wants to hear. Right. So like literally I have kind of two answers to it and I don't think either one of them is um, particularly (laughs) helpful I guess Mm -hmm. but maybe people just need the reassurance Um, like the first part is honestly no like there was no um, there was no turning back I mean for me specifically it was like there was nothing anyone could say or do or um, really make me believe because I had made the choice Mm -hmm. um I, I made the choice to be with Dave and marry Dave. And I, I truly, in my bones, felt like that was the right choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I mean, this is how it was a toxic relationship. Because I didn't think anything else mattered. Oh. And that is just like such a red flag. I can remember crying to you. Being like, Rachel, I miss you. Rachel, I am completely fucking lost without our relationship Mm -hmm. um and you just stone face saying this is how it is now yeah and i was like no yeah like oh my god no yeah but it was like i felt like i had to completely rip out every like part of me to make my marriage work. Right. And that included my family. That included my everything that made me me. That it just was like, okay, you as a human vessel need to stay in this marriage and it doesn't matter what you lose because you have to make it work. Right. And when I deconstructed that and accepted the reality of like, no, you can actually do what you want and you can pursue, um, yourself and like you don't have to do this um but going back to the question I think the other answer is um you as a person who is concerned for whatever like loved one um you deserve to be honest with them for you Mm. and I did not think you were gonna say that I mean I think it is hard and even now, like, there are people in my life that I struggle with, their partners or yeah. whatever, and there there isn't a right time. Yeah. There isn't a right place to say, hey, I'm struggling with who you have decided or who are you, you're with yeah. because I miss you or I think you deserve better right. or – um. but you can't just leave it there. Right. You have to say, this is how I feel. I feel like I've lost a big part of you. I understand that you love this person. Uh, How can we improve upon our relationship? How can we keep it going? Because I feel like if we don't have this conversation, we're going to lose it all. Wow, that is so helpful. Absolutely so helpful. I Because you, I felt so selfish giving a shit. I felt yeah. so much like she's happy, Laura, even though I knew you weren't happy. Right. You insisted you were happy. So I was like, well, maybe I don't know her as well as I thought I did. Yeah. Um, but to be able to say I needed to have this conversation if we're going to continue to have yeah. a relationship moving forward, because you're right. The, yeah. the loved one does have a need. Yeah. That, you that deserves to be met. And setting boundaries does not mean that you want to end your relationship it means you want it to continue right setting boundaries and expectations are all part of having a healthy relationship and 
if you don't have healthy boundaries or um, expectations and you can't vocalize how you feel to whatever relationship we're talking about, whether that be a sister, a partner, a, mm-hmm. a, a parent, um, then that relationship isn't as healthy as as you deserve it to be. Right. Um, so, yeah, like – I do not believe that I was the only person affected by my marriage, by my divorce, by my dating of date. Like I I was not the only person in that. Right. Like, yes, it was two people in that relationship, but that we weren't the only ones affected by it. No, we live in an ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. And like Dave dating me (laughs) – ruined or you know really fractured some of his relationships mm-hmm. with his family like that's the thing it wasn't just me right although like dave would have held on to the trash marriage we had yeah um it was not healthy for him either right and i just eventually i made the decision for both of us um but also i made it for me right like 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 in the end that's like what it had to be like it was it was me or him and um i was really sick of the belief that like being selfish was the worst thing you could be yeah because it's not no also i don't know that it was selfish right like i think that there's a difference between self-preservation and selfishness Mm -hmm. and when you notice you're losing yourself it's not selfish to say I want to get back right. to me. And I was enjoying the other relationships I was able to have as I was letting go yeah. of my marriage. Yeah. Like I had the capacity for so much more. Oh my God. So much more. Yeah. You were a treat. I guess. You were an absolute treat when you decided. Even like those few months after you moved back in with mom mm-hmm. and you, you had left and you guys were working on things. Yeah. It was obvious that working on things meant working on yourself as well yeah and um that was so refreshing to see um it was I don't know I I go back to like you were 21 Mm -hmm. you were 21 we were having hard conversations at 20 I was 24 25 like again you're as old as you ever yeah. were, so you feel like you know shit, but you don't. Yeah. And um, so it all makes sense when I look back on it, how it happened, but it also makes me so sad mm-hmm. for both of us. Yeah. That we didn't know better. Right. And there are, there are people that are with their right person at 21, you know, <clears throat> but... They're still 21. It, they're still 21. It's still really hard and... If you are young and getting married at 21, 22 years old, um, you just ha- like accept the reality that you guys truly are not adults yet. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with getting married because I don't think there's anything wrong with getting divorced. Right. So, um, you know, I think that it is perfectly acceptable to celebrate your love for, for the person that you are fully intending on spending the rest of your life with. Right. But have the understanding that, like, you guys don't have the frame of reference. Right. You guys are still growing up. The world is still Allow so Allow yourself small. to change. Like, what I mean more by that is, like, if you're getting married young, have that conversation with your partner that, like, you guys are going to change. There's no way around that. You don't know what career you want to do. You don't know what kind of parent you want to be. You right. don't know. You don't know yourself. And you can change. That's yeah. the thing. I think it, it's so easy to feel stuck Mm -hmm. like I made this decision and I don't want to be wrong in it yeah so I'm gonna stick it out yeah and that it's just it's just not true yeah there is no decision I can't speak so brazenly I guess but I will there's no decision that can't be unmade right besides like death and child children yeah but even then you get pregnant you have options yeah but once they're already born yeah you know you've got obligations i guess but yeah it's i think it it is like weird like i say that but it is really triggering for me when i shoot weddings of very young kids yeah 
But I mean, a lot of times they're just fucking happy, right. you know, and I think it really is important to acknowledge even at any age right. that like happy, hopefully you're with someone where you have the ability to change and grow with them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably one of the the biggest difference with me and my relationship now. Right. Well, you and Josh are so happy together Mm -hmm. you have fun together you laugh together he laughs with us yeah he laughs with mom it is so it's such a refreshing change of pace because I think for a long time you didn't even happiness just wasn't even on your radar it no it was it was petty Mm -hmm. to want happiness is petty to want happiness is childish and that's just not true Right. It just, that cannot be true. No. And it wasn't true. But it was a belief that I had to have to keep yeah. my marriage alive. Mm-hmm. That I didn't have to be happy. That that wasn't the point. Ugh. Hate that. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, there is something you said that like, it is okay to not be happy all the time. Like, right. You and Will have been together for a long time yeah. and have gone through seasons oh, of yeah. struggle. Yeah. But you still know that like dynamically yeah you and will are one in a million together yeah my like, favorite thing about me and will i told him this the other day is when we're hanging out in a group and i say something that only he finds funny oh my god it and i just like i say it and almost i know no one else is gonna find it funny i like say it just to make him laugh yes and he <laughs>, laughs and first of all he's brilliant yeah second smartest person i know after our dad right Mm -hmm. he's so smart and so when he thinks i'm funny i'm like wow will thinks you are like there's no one that thinks you're funnier than will will thinks you are the funniest person yeah well he's not wrong no but like (laughs) i don't think you're as funny as will thinks you're funny you and will have a very hilarious connection when it comes to humor yeah and but I for a long time and I think he still struggles with this I think men struggle with this a lot is, is the the idea that pursuing happiness is somehow less um worthy mm. of our attention yeah like it should just come naturally like duty right it comes first right and I just I feel like everything fits mm-hmm. when we're happy and that doesn't mean that we can't sit in sadness together Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that there aren't bad times but when when happiness is the pursuit Mm -hmm. when happiness is the goal just fucking laughing together yeah well jess has said on the podcast our our friend jess if you remember her oh yeah throwback to jess throwback to jess when jess led this podcast (laughs) (laughs) um but she talked about happiness and how it was kind of like fuck happiness Mm -hmm. because happiness shouldn't be the goal but it is an indicator that you are on the right track right right. and because happiness is so it will always change you know because a career might make you happy and then it doesn't right right? so it's like having the ability to kind of go through like seasons of whatever and finding happiness within that Mm -hmm. um because happiness is kind of a very it's fickle yeah and it's it's not a tangible yeah it's slippery thing. it's difficult but my i when jess did that i was listening as i was getting ready one day and i was like oh no jessica oh no mm-hmm. we do not fuck happiness yeah we love happiness but as she was talking about it i was like oh no this is absolutely yeah she was talking about happiness as a destination yes. rather than like an indicator. thinking about yeah the journey as an opportunity for happiness as well mm-hmm which we don't we obviously won't get into this right now but that's how i feel about you in this studio space mm-hmm. and your pride right mm-hmm. you've said that you're going to be proud once x happens yeah and my point is let's feel pride along the way and yeah. it'd be similar for happiness yeah but that's another podcast another day yeah that's that's a lot of shit to unpack in, in in therapy probably oh yeah but to to end us out yeah wrap um, it up wrap it up um the second part to my first question was when did you know that i was back to myself or my most truest self when were you like this is i think i i've talked a little bit about i think i noticed it when you were in oregon and you would call again and when you were back in in ohio and um you were around Mm -hmm. um 
you started to be yourself. I said this uh, to you a little bit ago, but you started to be yourself when he stopped coming around. Yeah. When you guys got to this point where you're like, if we're going to stay married, we cannot be a part of each other's families. Right. Which was like, you've said, well, what's the point of being married then? Yeah. Um, but that's when you started being yourself. When you were your absolute truest self is when you bought barley on an impulse. <laughs> when you were like, because a dog is a huge responsibility. Yeah. And you, to me, I don't think of Dave as a dog person. I don't think of Dave as somebody who wants to deal with that. Yeah. And you just said, fuck it. Yeah. I want this dog. I'm getting this dog. And it was that like classic Rachel impulse mm-hmm. that I was like, all right. And Barley was nuts and great. And your dog karma was good. My dog karma is good. Um, but that I think would be. And then when you got the sleeve mm-hmm. or the whatever it's called, the quarter sleeve. My or, quarter sleeve. It was just like you reclaiming your body. Yeah, that was in a ways big part. that made it clear that your mind was was back. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm happy to be back, honestly. Oh my god, happy to have you. <sighs> Thank God. We Those got are there the, in the dark end. days. Yeah. And that is the thing. If you feel like you are losing a friend or a sister or a brother, um, just a loved one. Yeah, they. Life has a way mm-hmm. of getting them back to, to where they are supposed to be. Right, and you know whatever you believe, I, I fully understand. Like I appreciate the journey I went on, and I was talking to Josh about this yesterday. That like our relationship, the way that him and I can talk to one another mm-hmm. and have these conversations, like I. I would go through that shitty marriage again. Yeah. And I really didn't feel like that for a really long time because I felt like it was a waste of time. Yeah. (laughs) But now I really do feel like I can see every single day how my past relationships, all of them, Mm -hmm. honestly, have led me to have a higher capacity to love, communicate, Mm -hmm. and establish expectations for mine and Josh's relationship. And same goes for him his last relationships and like all that stuff that we'd gone through because i think a lot of the time you know we we knew each other in high school so we were kind of like why weren't we together sooner would have been bad yeah i remember when he was around the first time and being like who is this kid who is this stoner kid now i love him yes love him it and that's what's so special and like how our dad oh my god loves him and I don't know if he's, he'll say that, but he approves of him. Yeah. And Oh, when you talked about that on one of those podcasts, I was sobbing. Sobbing hysteric. I know. Absolute bonkers. Okay, okay. we have to wrap it up. Okay, well, um, thank you for listening to um, our episode, guest starring my sister. Um, Jess will be doing an episode with her sister eventually, probably at some time. Mm-hmm. Soon, hopefully. So, And then maybe me and Britt can do an episode where we just talk shit we spill the tea yes oh q a time that would be really funny oh my (laughs) god yes (laughs) okay guys thank you for listening oh thank you for being here today aren't these outros really awkward wait what do you guys always do we out i don't know jesse leads it i follow her lead it's a lot of we out and then wasn't that awkward but honestly i do enjoy the outros oh good well we're outroing